Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You brought back to me this morning. Thank you, Lord. And I thank the Lord for it. Many years ago, I remember Paula being in those places. Well, my oldest son, he's about five years older than Paula. And Dr. Springer, he come into the hospital room and he says, your son has no hip sockets. I'm going to put him in those braces. David wore those braces for six to eight months. And I took him back to Dr. Springer and he says, Okay, we're going to take them off. Now we're going to put one of those cement things from his waist down to straighten out his legs. I thought, Lord, no. <laughs> I said, you're a greater God than that. And I, Amen. Come on, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to take him over there and let Brother Marlow pray for him. Amen. I know God's going to heal him. Yes, yes. And Brother Marlow prayed for him right over here. Yes, yes, yes. He was trying to crawl and pull up. Come on, sister. And Brother Marlow prayed for him. Yes. God came down. Yes. I never took him back to that doctor. Never. That boy was walking in just a few months. He's 48 years old now. He says, Mama, I've never had no trouble with my hips. He's played football. He's played baseball. He's run. God heal that boy. I never put him in my cast things. I never went back to that doctor. But I know today, today, and I want to still give God the glory. Give him the glory. Yes, and they walk just to find today. Thank and God Jesus. is so good. But when you got up and told that, I thought, oh, Lord, you did that for me, too. You did that for me, too. You did that for me, too. He did my son. He's blessed my son. He's got more work than he can do in his business. And I know God loves him. And I pray for him every day. I'd love to see him back in church. But God healed that boy. He gave him hip sockets. And, and when you got up and said that, I said, oh my gosh, I need to get up and praise the Lord and thank him for he was my son. People, they have been miracles in this church. They have been many miracles in this church. So don't give up and not believe because it can happen because I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with Paula. I've seen it happen with my son. And I've seen other things happen. Amen. But God is a miracle God. And I love him and I give him the praise tonight. I just had to give that testimony. God has been so good to me. I mean, he gave me more miracles than that. But that brought back that. That was your miracle. That was a miracle and a blessing to me. And I've never forgot it. And I've never not thanked God for touching him. But I appreciate him tonight. Mm -hmm. Brothers, I just had to, I just had to tell that. It was such a blessing. Thank you. God. Thank you. We lost two patients that time. Amen. One after another. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, well, it's too quiet. It's too quiet. God is not a miracle like that we told. Amen. Come on, come on, preach. Praise God. It's too quiet, amen. Thank you, Lord. I said it's too quiet, praise God. Come on, church, raise him up. Raise him up, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all know that I'm not one of those men that get up and so loud in here, but. Uh, I usually like to get up and thank the Lord for what He's done in my life and try to prove it with my life more than what I say. Uh, because uh, I understand that sometimes what you do, it talks louder than what you say. Yeah. And maybe that's the reason why I don't get up too much. Because I want to prove it that I love you and I love the Lord. 
And not with my word, but in deed and in truth. Amen. So I thank the Lord for one of the reasons that I get up is because uh, last week, I should have get up earlier than this, but last week, I was in such a terrible condition that I couldn't even walk. That's right. And it went just, you know, nobody noticed. Nobody uh, saw what I was going through. But I was here all the weekend last week suffering on my back. I couldn't walk and I couldn't do absolutely nothing. That's right. And by being alone in my house, I did for three days, went for a real experience. I couldn't even get in my bed, get out of the bed without excruciating pain. But I never missed a service. And the Lord blessed me with that. Because uh, that night, I think it was Sunday night, I told Brother Marlo, I said, I don't want to have no more confidence on men. I ain't going to the doctor, because sometimes when you get like that, you find a bunch of doctors around you. And I said, I ain't going to go to the doctor to get x-ray, MRIs, injection of this, or massages or what. I said, I want to trust in the Lord, Brother Marlo. I want you to pray for me. And you know that night the Lord healed me? Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for that because if you know what it is, Hinton Mary, you know what it is. You have a pain in your back. And when you even make one move, you don't know if you're going to be able to get back into that place. And you can go not even now one, two a step without a pain. I thank the Lord for the healing of God. Amen. You know that it healed me so many times. Yes. And I should have keep thank God every day for Come what he's done in my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How about Many it? of you know yeah. that God healed me from cancer. I believe it. <laughs> right. My I PSA it. was so skyrocket. The doctor said, we're going to have to do you uh, chemotherapy. I said, no. No. I don't believe in that. No. I said, well, let's go with uh, radiation. Am I accept that? Well, after 34 treatment, I got my PSA Lord. below normal. Oh, yes. I had to go back in a couple of weeks to the doctor because they wanted to check me once a year. But it's yes. been normal. Yes. For three years, it's been normal. Yes. And I know the Lord's yes. taking it care of me. Yes. I don't care what happened anymore. On, yes. That's what I said the other day. I don't want to see no doctor yes. put my pen in my back. If the Lord wants me to stay in this earth and do something for him, he's going to have to heal me. If he don't take me away, I'm ready to go. Give me right now. Today when Brother Marlo was praying for Brother Lonnie, I love him, man. He knows that. And I said, Brother Lonnie, I love you so much that I know God's going to heal you. And the love that I got for you, I know God is going to heal my legs. Yeah. I've been having problems. You see me sitting down, oh. it's not because oh. I, I don't want to respect the church or the minister. But I just can't stand on my feet too long. But I believe in God that he can I'm heal my right legs. Now. I'm I'm you. I know he's going to give me the strength to go on. Yeah. Because I trust him. I love him. Yeah. And I give everything that I got for him. I don't have nothing belong to me. It's all belong to him. Body, soul, and the spirit, it belongs to him. And if he wants to keep me around you, he's going to keep me. If he want to take me, I'm ready to go. I'm honest with you. I'm ready to go. I'm 80. I'm going to be 81. Bro, Mama's going to be 83. I'm right behind him. But you know, we're still serving the Lord. We want to do the will of God. I don't want to just back off. I want to keep serving the Lord. So I desire your prayers. Yes. Continue praying because I'm praying for all of you. Yes. I try to convince every one of you if I can. The Lord is good to us. Yes. And I feel very much part of the church for so many years that I don't think I go nowhere but it's straight up into heaven. That's right. So God is going to have mercy on me. And if he wants me to be around you and take care of the things around, he's going to give you a new life. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to read uh, chapter 5 of the book of Romans. Yeah. Encourage me to read the, ver the, the few verses in here. In chapter 5, verse 1 said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice and hope for the glory of God. Yeah. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also knowing that tribulation works patience. And you know when you are sick, you're going through some things. And tribulation is coming into you. But I tell you, hold on. 
Be patient. God will work it out. And you're going to come out of the end with the glory of victory in your life. And you're going to say, God did it for me. Because tribulations work in patience. we got to be patient for it. If things hurt, yes, it hurts. But we're going to get out of this one. Besides that, this is a temporary thing. We're going to be going someday where are no more pain, no more bills, no more nothing. And we will live forever in the kingdom of God. And I think that is one of the things that God said. And patient work experience. And experience hope. And hope makes not a change. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. I thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. I know I depend on it. Nobody can tell me that I don't have the Holy Ghost because I do have it. I speak to the Lord. I speak in the tongues. And nobody's going to tell me what I have is what will make me going on every day and serving the Lord. I love the Lord. I love you people. And I want to go on serving the Lord because that's the only thing in my life. I love to see every one of you here. Sidney Casillo, it's good to see you. Yeah. I want you to go on. You know that this just a little bit of a tribulation, but later on you're going to see the glory of the Lord. Yeah. God is going to bless you yeah. and go on. Let's serve the Lord together. today behold what manner of love yes. the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know we're not guessing we're not wondering John said we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Yeah. What manner of love. Hallelujah. It's a special love. Yes. A different kind of love yes. that nobody else yes. could have displayed. Yes. The love that reached down for us yes. when we were out there yes. lost and undone. Yes. It took that kind of love. Yes. Special love yes. to save us. Hallelujah. And John said it does not yet appear what we are going to be. But thank God there's a hope in our hearts that when he shall appear, that's what we're looking for. As we were singing these songs tonight, you know, these songs of hope, knowing that when Jesus comes back, oh, we want to be there. What a day that will be, brethren. What a day of rejoicing is going to be. Let us hold on to this hope. We are just not any and anybody. The scripture says we are a royal priesthood, yeah. holy nation, yeah. chosen generation, yeah. peculiar people yeah. who are called yeah. to show for the praises yeah. of him who have called us out of darkness yeah. into his marvelous light. Yeah. I'm glad to be here today. Yeah. I am on the rusty side tonight, yeah. as you can hear. I feel like I need a bottle brush, but thank God I have something to praise God for. He has done great things for us. Where we can praise Him. I praise Him tonight. God is good. I say, God is good. I say, God is good. And God, I'm a child of the King. I just want to get up and say how much I'm so overwhelmed to hear all these messages being preached. Use your mic, Sister Nash, but they can't hear you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hear what you have to say. Right. Now let somebody stand beside you. I want to get up and thank the Lord for all that he has done for me. That's right. Yeah. I want to greet everyone in the precious name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Yes. Yes. You know, it gives me hope tonight to know that one day Jesus is coming back again. Yes. You know, coming to receive us from this wicked world. That's right. 
you know, when I listened to the message today and I started to look on the word hope from what pastor was preaching today, and I was looking on 1 Peter 1 and the fourth verse. He said, Blessed be the Lord, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of the dead, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I was looking at the word hope, but when I go down to the fourth verse, it said, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, one that faded not away, reserved in the heavens for us. You know, I am so glad tonight yes. that the lively hope that I have within me, I want to cherish it because it's not in vain. And I'm so glad that it is reserved for the people of God. You know, when I look at the word reserve, no one can take it from us. No one can make us lose that inheritance that God had for us. It is reserved. It is set apart for us. You know, here on earth, you, you have certain things that you try to put aside and when you realize somebody break your house or somebody come in and steal it from you. But you know what? This is reserved. No one can touch it. The only time you can lose it is you have to take yourself out of it. And I am determined tonight by the grace of God assisting me to stay with the Lord. I have not get up in a long while, but I'm still here. I haven't gone back from whence I came because I did made up my mind and I've counted the cost that comes what may. By the grace of God assisting me, I'm going on with him. And if I only allow him to hold my hands, you know, sometime in this world we, have, we hear words, unkind words, words of discouragement and word of encouragement. But you know what? As we travel along, there got to be something in the way for you to go over. Because we want to go to point B. And we're not going to stay at point A all the day of our life. We are moving on. And my determination and my desire is to continue loving the Lord. You pray for me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord's grace and mercy. Um, I thought about over the, the years, I, I had mentioned to, I don't know, I think Brother Merle just a few short weeks ago that um, I've come, to, I came this way 21 years ago next month. And um, boy, it doesn't even seem like it's been that long, but um, I thought about all the miracles that the Lord has performed for me. I know I have two children and most of you know, I have Hunter back there who plays the trumpet when he was born, you know, the Lord said, oh, I mean, the doctor said, you know what? He has a hole in his heart the size of his fist. Now, we all know that a child, an infant at three months old, that's how big their fist is. Their heart is, is the size of their fist, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then a couple years later, um, I tried again, and we had Haley, and, you know, the doctor said, um, you're probably going to have a miscarriage. You know, you have placenta previa, you can bleed to death, and, you know, <laughs> this and that, so I thought, okay, Lord, this is in your hands, you know, so I was put on bed rest, and lo and behold, she came, no problems, you know, so I'm so thankful that I have two beautiful children, one a little prouder than the other, but, you know, um, but the miracles never cease to amaze me, and Brother Marlo said just about a year or so ago that, um, that this church wouldn't be the same. Well, I sit here tonight and I know that it's not the same. And you know, you can look in the congregation uh, amongst us, you know, we have Brother and Sister House who, who's back with us. We have Brother, um, Brother Bush and Sister Carol, I almost made that mistake. Um, but they're here amongst us. We didn't have them a year ago. Now today, Brother Rhodes has had a miracle. There's been so many miracles, Sister Mary. You know, and I, and I look back at our situation right now. You know, Dean is down and out for right now, but it won't be long that he'll be back on his feet. You know, the Lord spared him, and many of you know, but I, I haven't given my side of the testimony on Dean's 
miracle, and I, I hope I'm okay, Brother Marlo, by sharing this, but I feel like I need to give the Lord praise and give the Lord glory because you know what? We don't praise Him enough. And you know, grace and mercy, we're so fortunate to have grace and mercy from the Lord. And to me, grace and mercy, you know, grace is God's favor. And mercy is compassion. And we as individuals, our human flesh, seek favor with people and we seek compassion from people yes. but oh thank you lord that i yes. have grace and mercy yes. from you because yes. when you're in his will it's unending yes. lord yes. um so just about a year ago we're coming up on a year ago that dean has yes. has yes. gotten his miracle he's got his oh, kidney sure. transplant and um we're doing dialysis many of you know that we did it at home um every single day for over a year and a half probably, and then he went to a dialysis center three days a week. <coughs> Brother Bibbins knows about that. Um, but lo and behold, about, I mean, I, my, my job was changing. My, my, I was going through a, a bank merger. There had just been an announcement. And I spoke to two people saying to them, the Lord has got to do this miracle now sooner than later. And um, I know it was Brother Marlow and it was Brother Les Liebman that I said that in front of. And I said, Lord, uh, this, this has to happen. I, you know, I kind of, I felt kind of guilty because I kind of put my foot down and said, this has got to happen and it's got to happen now. You know, so that was on a Wednesday night. Lo and behold, Sunday morning, LifeLink calls us and says, um, yeah, well, we, we have a kidney for you. And we're like, what? You know, doing dialysis. Well, we can't. We're almost at the end of dialysis treatment, so we're going to have to call you back. Oh, no, ma'am. And, and so we said, okay, so what do we need to do? She said, well, we're going to have to call you back. Did you get your updated screenings done? And when you're on um, a transplant list, you have to get all of your cardiologists. You have to get, you know, ultrasounds. You, you name it. You have to have stress tests. All of those done on an annual basis to stay on the list. So we had completed them timely and everything. Um, and, you know, the nurse says, well, did you have your latest stress test? And we said, yes. And she said, well, we don't have those results in front of us. Let us call your cardiologist. It's, a, it's 1130 on a Sunday morning. So we said, okay, here's his name and phone number. And we hung up the phone. And I looked at my husband and I said, good luck with that. It's a Sunday morning at 1130. Not going to happen today, so we just missed out, you know. 20 minutes later. 20 minutes later. So this doubting person said, you know what, it's not going to happen. And who, what doctor is going to answer the phone and much less get a stress test result over to somebody in 20 minutes? So 20 minutes later, we're just we're getting them off the machine, and they said, what time can you be here? We have the results. And we're like, what? You know, this can't be happening, you know. Well, how soon can you be here? We'll be here at 1 o'clock. So 1 o'clock came. They told us, you know, the doctors came in, the nurses came in, and, you know, they're doing all their blood, blood work and saying it's taken three hours. So I get on the phone. I call Sister Marlon and said, okay, well, it'll be three hours, you know. And in the meantime, you know, we just, I just literally put a couple pairs of socks because I like to take off my shoes and I put socks on when I got to the hospital. Literally, that's all I grabbed because I thought, you know, okay, this is, they already told us we're gonna be the backup to a recipient. So we are actually second in line. And the first in line was a child. So we just thought, you know what, Lord? Okay, you're just showing us what, what's gonna take place. And because Sherry's a nervous Nelly and I'm, I'm gonna be able to take my notes and figure out how it's gonna happen the next time around. Right? Right. That's not what the Lord had planned. So after several hours, you know, and, and they gave us the whole protocol and everything they told us happened just the way it did. They said, you know, you'll come in, we'll come in about midnight. You're, you're probably going to be sent home. It'll be late in the, in the evening. It'll be about midnight and um, we're, we're going to send you home, but that's okay. Don't, you know, you'll be back soon enough. And we're like, okay, so there I did. I took notes and figured out, okay, I need to pack this, need to pack that, need to pack this. So everything went to par. The doctor comes in at about quarter to 12, long about midnight. Long about midnight. So things happen long about midnight. 
They came into the doctor, I mean, into the hospital bed. Dean's not in the bed, Sherry's in the bed. And um, clearly they knew I was not Dean, but um, so I said, you know, the doctor comes in and she said, Mr. Harris, and we, Dean and I looked at each other, okay, well, it's about midnight, they're sending us home. And they said, the kidney is yours. And we said, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, again, we're doubting, and, and we really and truly wanted that child to have that kidney ahead of us, you know. And they said, the kidney is yours. And we were like, how did that happen? You know, we were just, we were the backup. And the doctor said, you were the better match. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but that excites me just to relive and talk about it. Because sometimes, don't you know, you have to talk about those situations to make it real life again to you. So long about midnight, we got those news, that news. Well, at the, the halls are dark. So Sherry decides, I, I'm going to jump up and down, and I'm going to go run through the halls. And, I, you know, I called Sister Marlo. I called everybody that I knew, and, and I've got literally 3% on my battery on my phone because I did not bring my charger. So I'm like, well, it's ours, it's ours, it's ours, you know. Dean had to come out of the room and say, shh, people are trying to sleep. I'm like, not this woman. We are, we are we have a miracle. So tonight... Thank you for listening, but the Lord is so good, yes, and I'm so thankful yes, for His grace and mercy.
believe it. <laughs>